Hello, I am back with another Zwilbot tutorial and this time around I'm going to be talking about how you can use Zwilbot in a live performance. So this is going to be geared towards using it with a push because that's the controller that I have. If you don't have a push and you've got a different controller, you can still use the same basic uh, principles, it's just the way you'd go about it would be a bit different. So I've already set up a few things here, I've got the player, I've got this video, this looping, and a bunch of modules here. Here I have got a bunch of my tracks in this audio channel here, and you can see that reflected on my push here. These lights represent these tracks, so when I push these it's going to trigger different songs. And then here I've got three MIDI tracks which I'm going to talk about in a second. So first off what I normally like to do is for every Zwilbot module that I have in my project I like to map a pad to uh, turn it on and off and the way I do that is by mapping this device on off button. So because this isn't something you can do built in with the push you have to use a third party device called Push Hacker. So this is a Max device. I'll put a link in the description below. It does cost money. It's currently £22. So if you want to use this technique that I'm talking about in this video, you are going to have to buy Push Hacker. But it's well worth it because it allows you to map any push button, knob, pad to whatever you want in Ableton. So I've already dragged it into this channel here. It has to go on a MIDI channel and it doesn't matter where it goes. I normally just create a new MIDI channel for it and chuck it right to the back of my session so it's out of the way. And you just click open and then you get this interface. All this here reflects the buttons on the actual push. If I wanted to map something to this button here, that is this here. So what you do, you've got these different options here. To be honest, I've only ever used map and curve. I've never used any of these. And in this video, I'm not going to go into detail about how the push hacker works because that's a whole other subject. I'm just going to talk about how I use it. Because I'm just going to be using an on off button, I can just click map. And then I'm going to click this map button and let's just do the drift one for now. So if I click this, oh, it's not worked. So it can be a bit buggy. Sometimes what you have to do is close it and then reopen it and try again. So map, map. And there we go. You can see this has changed now to device on. So this has worked. And now you can see when I'm pressing the button, when I'm pressing the pad here, it is switching the device on and off. Now, the problem with that is that now it's disabled the button, the uh, ability to trigger that track because it's overridden with this custom mapping. So I'm going to delete that and the way you delete it is this X here. So that's gone and now it's gone back to triggering the track as it was before. Okay, so instead I want to map it to this button. So I'm going to click on my push hacker device, click map, click map again. And so now you can see this button is lit up and it's controlling this drift module, switching it on and off. You can control the color of it. So up here where it says off and on, it's got numbers and these numbers correspond to different colors. So you can see, well, you probably can't notice too well because my webcam's not very good, but the color of it is changing. So I like it to be red when it's off and green when it's on. So the numbers that correspond to that are two for off, 10 for on. So now it's green and if I hit it it changes to red. So that's just a nice visual way 
for me to know it's off, it's on. Okay, so I've got the drift there, and now I'm just going to do the same thing with these other modules. So I'll have the blur underneath it, and again, I'm going to change these off and on colors. Underneath that, I'm going to do the filter to 10. Here, map, map, let's get the Petra to 10. And finally, this offset. Okay, so now I can close this push hacker. And you can see I've now got these five lights on my push. And they are all controlling the devices. You'll see as I'm switching them all on, now all five of these devices are on. And if I press these, now they're all off. That's quite simple and straightforward when it comes to switching devices on and off, but what if I also want to change some of these parameters? So, for example, let's look at the filter. Now we've got all these different filters, filter types here. So what if I want to have some control over that? Well, there are ways to do it in the push hacker, but they're not very good. So what you can do, instead of using the push hacker, you can set up a MIDI channel, which I've done here, and I've titled it Filter. And if you move the filter device onto that MIDI channel, it's still connected to the player, so we don't have to worry about that. It's, yeah, we can see it's still there. So that's all good. But what we can do if it's on a MIDI channel is set up some dummy MIDI clips here go into the envelopes view and just go back and click this. So I've got it selected here. So I've got my filter selected here and my filter menu. And now I can create some clip automation to tell it which filter type to select. So let's say I wanna use black and white A. And I'm gonna create another dummy middle clip, MIDI clip and choose black and white B, and then I can have an, another one. Let's just say color B. Now, whenever I trigger these MIDI clips, it's gonna change that filter type. And the great thing about this is I've got those MIDI clips assigned to pads on my push. So I can now control these filter settings with the pads on my push. Now, what else might I want to control? So maybe I want to change this, these shift settings on the offset module. Let's just I'll switch everything back on. I'm gonna play some audio. You can see I'm changing the filter there using these controls and I can switch some of these devices on and off at the same time. It's quite a lot, quite a lot you can play about with. Anyway, um, what was I doing? Let's get this back to black and white. Right. So if I want to change, let's just see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, that, that, that could work. That would be cool to be able to adjust that. So what I can do is set this up the same way that I set up the filter, except I won't be able to do it on a MIDI channel because we've got this sound reactivity set in here on the kaleidoscope effect. So if I just press play, you'll see that this is changing in accordance with the incoming audio, which means that this device has to be on an audio channel because I need this to be responding to the audio. Um, and shout out to Space Tiger 3000 who pointed this technique out to me when I originally published this video. I didn't think to do this for some reason. 
So yeah, what you need to do is set up an audio channel. And what we're going to do is, same as we did with the filter, we're going to drag this device onto that audio channel. And as with the filter, it's still connected to the player, so it's still working, so we don't have to do anything. But we need this audio to be routed to this channel so that this kaleidoscope setting is responding to the audio here. So we change this audio from setting to the channel here. I'm just going to rename that. And change monitor to in, and then we just need to mute it. Now, if I hit play, we can see this kaleidoscope is still responding to the audio. But what we can do now is create some dummy audio clips with the automation for this shift setting. So you need to arm it first, because with an audio track, you can't just double click to create a clip like you can in a MIDI channel. So we just need to hit record. And then you can just stop it straight away because it doesn't matter what this audio is. We just, we're just creating it for the clip to use the automation. Okay, uh, you need to make sure it's on warp because automation doesn't work unless the clip is warped. So we want to select, in this case, the offset module. And uh, rather than go through all this and find the, the parameter I want to adjust, I'm just going to click it. And now it'll automatically select it here. And yeah, so we can choose where we want it to be. So let's say we want it off for one. Actually, we'll, yeah, we'll have it off for one. And then I'm going to duplicate that clip. And in this one, I'll maybe have it up there. This one, I might put it here. This one, I might have it in max. Um, and what you can also do is create one clip where it's actually changing. So we can have it go up and down. And this is where you, you might want to um, adjust the length of the clip in this case, because depending on how long you want this automation to last. If I just get rid of that, let's do it again. So we can have it go from zero to maximum over the course of this bar. So I've just created a a uh, four bar loop here. Okay, so now if I let's just turn that off. If I play and trigger these clips, you'll see now we've got zero, but I can click this one and click this one. And you're seeing this shift control is changing as I'm clicking these audio clips and for this last one you can see it's changing you can see that's reflected in the clip here and I can also change the Y parameter if I want to in the same clip so let's say in this one I want the Y parameter to be, to be also changing but in the opposite direction I'm going to highlight that. I'm just clicking Control and C to copy that. And I'm going to go to Shift Y and Control V to paste it, but I want it to be inverted. So I'm just going to do this. There we go. So now, if you watch these, you're seeing that they're changing in the opposite directions. So if you've got some sound reactivity, that's how you can use audio clips to adjust parameters. We can also use the push hacker to adjust these dials. So let's look at how you would do that now. One thing I'll just quickly note here that is worth mentioning this robot does have all of these parameters uh, automatically set up with the push. So if you put the robot module in your 
project and you have a push, you'll notice that you do have control over all the parameter settings. It does automatically map it to the knobs. It's just not very user friendly because there's so many of them that a lot of the time you have to switch to different screens to get to the one you want and then you have to go back to the previous screen. It's not very accessible. So I want to just have it easily accessible. And what I'm going to do is map them to some of these knobs. So I'll put it on that swing control knob because I never use that. Click map and just map it to there. Uh, for some reason it's not working. Let's try the master control because I definitely don't want to be changing that during my set so we can override that there we go so that's working now you can see as i'm changing this knob it is changing this setting so that's x and if i wanted to also map y i could do it separately so let's just put it on this knob there we go so now I can adjust them both separately, or you could adjust them both at the same time. If I remove this, you notice there's multiple mappings here, so I could also map. So now I'm mapping both of them at the same time. And you can have, in this case, up to four different things. Now I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to put it back because I do want it separate. And uh, it seems to, when you map something and then you're deleting it and trying to re-add it, it really has issues with that. It doesn't like you mapping stuff and then remapping it. It can like just completely stop working sometimes, which might be what's happened here. Yeah, because it's not working when I'm turning it. So what normally will resolve that is if you close the project and reopen it, but I'm not going to do that now because I can't be bothered. Okay, so I've got the, the X one. We'll just leave the Y one. But I've got the X one mapped, so now you can see I'm able to play about with that. And I can switch the blur on, the drift effect. And I can change the filter here. Turn the offset on and off. Yeah, so I mean, that's it. There's obviously lots of scope for this because any one of these parameters you can map to either a pad to a knob if that's not working, or you can do the method that I use with the filter where you just use uh, MIDI clip automation.